wants to get crooked, I'll give him my fist. You might read from Revelation back to Genesee. You get some kids, you southern can belong to me. Ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me, cause your southern can is mine. All oh, lashes, lashes, mama seeing the sin. Every time I hit, she's in a dozen hands. Give you that punch or that Bob wife fan. Every time I hit, you know I ain't got no sense. Ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me, cause your southern can is mine. Alright, that was Southern Can Mama by Blind Willie McTell. Uh, this is from 1931. We're continuing on in our Blind Willie McTell lessons. This is the seventh song to feature out of my new ebook release, the Blind Willie McTell Pre War Recordings ebook, which is now available on my store at deltalumusic.com. So, once again, thanks again for following along, everybody. I'm very excited to continue in teaching the folk, the more folk traditions of blues. The first two years we looked at the rugged delta sounds of Robert Johnson, Sung House, R.L. Burnside, and now we're going towards more of the clean, ragtime, folky blues, starting with Blind Willie McTell. All right, so if you followed along already, we've, we've covered a lot of McTell's work across various keys. We've looked at songs made in the key of G, C, D, and E. So Southern Can Mama belongs in the key of C. It's, it's kind of similar to Dark Knight Blues. If you haven't watched it already, please definitely watch that lesson. Alright, so enough babbling on here. In order to begin this lesson, we have to go over the essentials. Uh, I know that McTell exclusively played a 12-string guitar, but for learning purposes, let's just stick with the regular old six-string acoustic guitar for now. I don't recommend playing an, uh, an electric guitar in learning this folky style music. So we've got that down pat. I like to utilize plastic finger picks. Again, I have uh, fragile fingers and it allows me to play the strings a little bit with more crisp tonality. <clears throat> All right, we've got that down, and then we're, we're also talking about the position of the right hand. The, these lessons are carrying on in the tradition of classic finger-picking blues styles. If you haven't already watched my beginning finger-picking blues, lessons one through four, which is available for free, uh, look at that ebook on my website. It's a prerequisite to following along with all my lessons. So naturally with the right hand you want to have it positioned like this. The outer lining of the palm of your hand is resting over the 6th and 5th strings. The thumb is hovered over the 5th uh, string like this. The thumb is going to be responsible for playing notes on the 6th, 5th, and 4th strings. The accompaniment bass notes. And then the index and middle finger, which I have finger picks for, are going to pluck, pluck up the first, second, and third treble strings. And then you'll create this sort of pitching motion, this finger picking motion to play chords, melody. That combination of such is going to be imperative to learn. All right, and, and another imperative uh, note with playing Blind Willie McTell's music is tuning. Tuning is everything in studying McTell's work. We are focusing on his pre-war recordings, the Library of Congress uh, recordings and, and whatnot. We are not looking at the Atlanta 12-string album produced in 1949. No, none of those songs will feature in any of my lessons. These are all pre-war recordings going from 1927 to 1933 in this range. <clears throat> so Southern Can Mama is a fast ragtime piece played in the key of C and it's down tuned to standard C tuning. This is the only instance thus far where he's not playing a semitone up from the, uh, the bass tuning. It's a straight tuning, so it's a clean tuning. And so traditionally where your guitar would be tuned to E standard tuning with the top string being tuned to E, well that top string now is going to be down tuned to C. And I'm pitched to exactly what you hear in the original recording. So if you wanted to follow along with McTell, you would be in pitch and in perfect pitch with him so that you could learn. And this is how I like to arrange my lessons so that you can follow along with the original recording. So 
what I want to do is we tune our guitars together. So when I play the, the pitch on my string, you, you go ahead and tune your guitar to what you hear my guitar doing. So the top string is going to go from an E to a C. So it means you're down tuning your machine heads down two whole steps. This is my C. This is my next, the fifth string is going to be an F. My fourth string is going to be a B flat. B flat or A sharp. My third string is going to be a D sharp or an E flat. My second string is going to be a G. And finally, my bottom string is going to be a C. So go ahead, and since this is in the key of C, let's play a C chord. So for some reason, McTell liked to down tune his uh, strings very low. Um, we're in a reasonable range. You will, uh, you will come to find when you study McTell's music that he down tuned his guitar even lower to what I have going on right now. Southern Can Mama belongs in the same family of songs as This Is Not The Stove To Brown Your Bread, Come Around To My House Mama, and Razor Ball. Those three songs feature in the very similar chord arrangement and structure. So if you want, if once you learn this song, try to listen to those songs and play uh, yeah. over what you've learned. Ironically enough, all of those three songs that I mentioned, This Is Not The Stove To Brown Your Bread, Come Around My House Mama, Razor Ball, are tuned to standard A tuning. So right now we're tuned to standard C. Well, he down tunes his machine heads an additional two more steps. So he's four whole steps down from E when he plays those songs. You're basically talking about the strings almost falling off the guitar. They're down tuned so low. Again, I don't know why he did this. I presume that since he sang in such a high pitch of voice, having the guitars down tuned so low allowed his flexibility in range with his vocals. Therefore, they, I, that's my theory, is that if his guitar was pitched higher, it would be a little bit more work on the voice to carefully sing in pitch to whatever the guitar was tuned to. So those are some key pointers there. We, tuning is essential here. And, um, and Razor Ball is actually the exception of those three songs where it's tuned a semitone up like in the tradition that we've been discussing. Okay, so now that we've got the introduction down, let's go ahead and look at the first verse or the introduction, which is quite honestly the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and start the introduction, which is gonna sound like this. This song is played uh, pretty fast. It's a high tempo, and um, it's a very ragtime piece of a song, and it's played in the key of C. So if you if you have the ebook available with you, you have those six illustrations of the chord diagrams. The chords that are going to feature as part of this introduction and stanza are going to be C, C major, then you have E major. And then you're going to play a pair of the long A and A7 chords like we've talked about. So you have the long A, then the A7, then you have a, a D7 chord. You can play the top string, uh, sixth, uh, sixth string second fret if you want to, as a D7 slash F sharp, or just the D7, and then a G7 chord. So essentially, he plays those chords in succession. C, E, A, A7, D7, 
G7, back to C. So those are the, the predominant chords that you will have to get used to in playing. So the introduction and also for the, the first verse, and the first part doesn't sing, but he plays, uh, this is going to be very straightforward and easy, he plays two strums of the C chord first, one, two, then he shifts over to an E major chord and plays that twice, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then he'll lock into this long A and A7 chord, but um, he'll, he'll play uh, four strums of that. So as he transitions from this E to an A, you're going to play the long A position. The, uh, the second fret you're going to bar from the fourth string down, like this. And then the pinky is going to come and play the bottom string on the fifth fret. And then you're either your ring or middle finger is going to come and play the A7, the bottom string on the third fret. A7. So the next four chords will be so the, the from the beginning it's C one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when he goes from E to A, he'll he'll do that pretty quickly, then that in transition transition will be E then A, and he'll just play the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd string while barring that 2nd fret first, like this, and then you play the, the long A chord once, followed by two strums of the A7 chord. So from the beginning it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Seven, eight. And you can strum with the with the right hand just with the thumb or with the index finger flick upwards. And then the thumb plays that fifth string open. So those are the uh, that's the first three chords. C, E, A, A7, then he plays the D7 chord twice, and it's optional if you want to play the top string on the second fret, or just play a regular D7. You play that twice, one, two, and then you play the G7 chord twice, and then you resolve on the C major chord. So from the beginning it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And again slow it's C E A long A A7 A7 D7 G7 C you try to play that fast. And I'm doing it in the finger picking motion there. Is what I assume he's doing as well. But those are the chord structures. So and that's going to play a part throughout the whole song. So that's pretty important. And then he plays this transitionary figure which follows after the succession of chords and it's based in C. It's a combination of playing the C chord and then a, uh, a bass line after that, extracted out of the C major scale. And this sounds like this. And so he plays that twice and essentially what he's doing is he's playing the C chord once and then he's gonna play a series of four notes. You're gonna play the top string on the third fret, then you play the open string on the fifth string, then the second fret fifth string, and then the third fret fifth string. So the four notes are one, two, three, four. It's like a baseball 
um, a baseball lick, a charge. And th this is again coming out of these typical ragtime licks. C major scale. So again, those four notes are one, two, three, four. So the combination is C, one, two, three, four, back to C, and he strummed that twice after that. So from the, the beginning it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to the riff. fluid transitionary piece. All right, so that's the introduction. We've gone over the chords and also we played this bass line figure. Now we're going to go to the part where we start singing. <clears throat> All right, so now what we're going to do is discuss the first the uh, the first stanza, the portion where he's singing. And it will sound a little like this. Um, uh, okay, so yeah. So it will sound a little bit like this. It goes like this. Now look here, mama, I'll tell you this. You want to get crooked, I'll give you my fist. You might read from Revelations back to Genesee. You get crooked yourself and can't belong to me. Stuff to me, cause your southern can is mine. <clears throat> Alright, so that's the first verse. And what he's doing there is again, he's continuing on like we did in the introduction. It's two strums of C where he goes, now. One, two, now. Look here, mama. Now look here, mama. Tell you this, and with th this is stuff that we've already covered. So again, it's now look here, Mama. Let me tell you this. C E A A seven. Now look. And then he actually stays in A one more time. He, he extends that. So in the introduction, he just played it one figure, but here he plays it twice. So again, it, it'll sound like this. Now look here, mama, I'm gonna tell you this. He plays it again. Look here, mama, let me tell you this. One, two. And he plays it again. Then when he goes from C A C E A, he goes back to C again. He doesn't go to D7 or G7 quite yet. He just comes back to C and starts over. So how that's gonna play out is like this. I'll play it from the beginning. Now look here, mama, let me tell you this. You want to get And the just note the transitionary pieces here. It's the first three times that he sings, he's still playing in this progression. C E A. Look here, mama, let me tell you this. C E A A7. You might read from Revelation back to Genesee. So he plays that combination three times. And in the part where he goes, you might read from Revelation, back to Genesee. And then he follows with, you get crooked, your southern can belong to me. 
and that's where the D7 and the G7 kicks in. <clears throat> All right, so, um, so yeah, continuing on there, he he'll play it a little bit different here. When he gets it to the D7 chord, he actually plays it five times instead of twice, like in the introduction. And here in the portion he goes, But if you get crooked, if you get crooked, so plays it sort of like five strums. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But if you get crooked, if you get one, two, three, four, five. If you get crooked, if you get crooked. Then he goes to a G7 chord, you southern can. He plays that once. And while he's holding the G7 chord, the pinky is going to come and play the second string on the third fret. He'll play that once, and then he'll take the index finger and play the second string first fret. And then end on the C chord. And this is the portion where it goes, Your southern can belongs to me. But if you get crooked, your southern can belongs to me. So it's G7 and then these two notes. And then you end on the C major chord. But if it gets crooked, your southern can belongs to me. Boom. One, two, three, and I play with the index finger. And that's that. Uh, that's the verse, which is going to continue throughout the whole song. So from the beginning, it's now look here, mama. Let me tell you. You wants to get crooked, I'll give you my fist. You may have to read from Revelation and back to Genesee. You gets crooked, your southern can belongs to me. Is that. And then um, moving forward, he's going to play this, this bass lick to bridge into the chorus. So it's, your southern can belongs to me, ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. He always he starts with this bass riff. Ain't no use in bringing no, ain't no use in bringing no. And then the chorus is basically a condensed version of what we've talked about in the verse. And that's going to sound like this. Ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. Your southern can is mine. And that is you have C twice, one, two, then E twice, then the A combo four times. One, two, three, and then you play the, the A chord before you transition into the D7 chord, which is played twice. Then the G chord, G7 chord once, with followed by this lick again, and then you resolve on C. So from the beginning it's, ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me, your southern can is, can is mine, and end on C. And then when you get to the next measure, he plays C again, followed by that uh, bass, bass lick, which comes up again. So we're going to take a rest there and continue on with the verse. All right, so we're moving on to the next, next portion of this stanza. So the, the first go around is... Uh, uh, where he says, now look here mama, let me tell you this You want to get crooked, I'll give you my fist You might read from Revelation, back to Genesee You gets crooked, your southern gamble belongs to me 
Ain't no use in bringing old jobs to me Cause your southern count is mine So that's where we're at And then he plays this quick figure Before he goes into the next stanza which is exactly the same And in this portion he continues again with the same chord progression which is the CEAA7, and that's Might have to go uptown, get arrested, put me in jail. Some hot shots got money, here to go my bail. As soon as I get out, hit the ground. The southern can is worth two dollars, half a pound. In this portion, though, the difference here in the second stanza is that he doesn't stay in A that long. So here he goes, might have to go uptown, get arrested, go on my bail. Some hot shots got money. Notice here that he's not playing the A figure twice, like in the first time. So it's, might have to go uptown, get arrested, go on my bail. In the first verse, he, he stays on the A chord twice. Here he doesn't. It's only once. So that's continuing on. All of this is repetitive, and I'm going to kind of breeze through here. So he goes through all of that and and um, he continues with Soon as I get out to hit the ground Your southern can is one two dollars half a pound And then he locks into the chorus again by playing this bass bass figure Ain't no use in bringing no job to me Your southern can is mine Here in the chorus though he does a, li a little bit something different here he stays on the chorus, he extends it out by playing, um, when he speaks into the lyrics, I'll play this transition again. So it's, ain't no use to bring an old job to me, cause your southern can is mine in the morning. Southern can belongs to me, I ain't lying. Southern can So it's this portion where he, he doesn't want the chorus the end, he keeps extending it. And what he's doing there is he's playing an E and an A chord um, before closing out the chorus. So again, it's um, I'll play the chorus. It's ain't no use bringing no job to me because your southern can is mine. And then immediately afterward, he, he'll play the E chord twice fast. And this is the portion where he goes in the morning, in the morning. So it's E, A, in the morning, then he goes to D7, Southern can belongs to me, I ain't lying, Southern can belongs to me, in the morning, Southern can belongs to me, I ain't lying. And that's what he's doing there, he's playing those two chords, E and A, to extend out the chorus. All right, so, and then he eventually finishes the chorus. And then he plays this figure once more. And that figure is going to bridge into a sort of pre-chorus in the song, the very characteristic combination of four chords, which was, is gonna end up sounding like this. Oh, ashes, the ashes mama's seen the sin. Every time I hit you, feel like 10,000 hands. Every time I hit you on a pop wild fence. Every time I hit you, know I ain't got no sense. Ain't no use of bringing no stuff to me, cause your southern can is mine. And that's what we're gonna go over next. Alright, so uh, preceding before, we talked about him playing this figure. <laughs> comes to a portion of the song where he's going to play four chords I missed uh, some noticeable pauses almost like a whole step rest and he'll play the chord rest and sing in the meantime and you have to get the timing right now the chords that he's going to play here are a, a C major chord and you it's optional to play the um, the top string on the third fret the G note here you could play it like a full C chord, a richer chord, which I recommend playing here. I think in instances like this, that's what McTell is doing, is playing those full chords. So he plays a C major chord, 
Then he's going to play a C7 chord. And it's, again, optional to play that top string. So C and C7. Then he's going to play an F chord, um, this chord, with the top, the thumb playing the top string on the sixth, on um, the sixth string, first fret. This F chord, and then the the final chord is going to be this strange kind of variation of a G sharp chord. And what you're doing here is you're essentially playing this F chord figure and you're going to slide this fingering all the way to the the uh, fourth and fourth fifth and sixth frets you'll play a figure sort of like holding like an F chord except the bottom string is not going to be played or it can be played open but essentially this is how I play it you'll take the index finger and play the second string fourth fret middle finger plays the third string fifth fret and the ring finger plays the fourth string sixth fret so this is like a G sharp major chord now you can play you can do two things here you can play the full G sharp chord I think what he's doing in the original recording is bypassing the bottom string entirely He's not even playing the bottom string in this sequence. Or he does play. So, sometimes I hear the kind of dissonance when he does play the bottom string open. And I have it tabbed out to include the bottom string. So those are the, the four chords here that are going to appear in this juncture of the song, which sounds like this. Oh, ashes, the ashes, mama, sin, the sin. Every time I hit, you know I got a dozen hands. A punch through that barbed wire fence. Every time I hit you, no angle ain't got no sense. And that those are the portion that features these long pauses. So you start off this, oh ashes, the ashes, mama. You play the C chord first. Oh ashes, the ashes, mama. And sin to sin, he plays the C7 chord there. So it's um, ashes, the ashes, mama. And sin to sin, so it's from C to C7 on that sequence. Again, it's C, C7, and then you wait a little bit, and it goes every time I hit you, every time from C7 to F, every time I hit you, I feel like I've got a dozen hands. So in this portion where it goes, every time I hit you, it's every time, every time, C7, F, and then you play F, D sharp. So essentially these are these combinations of chords. So from the beginning it's, oh, ashes the ashes, mama, and sin the sin. Every time I hit you, I feel I got a dozen hands. One, two, three, four, wait, I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's this strange chord, but you'll hear this kind of strum of chords a lot in a lot of his recordings so you'll know exactly what he's doing here but timing timing is key here so he he injects these combination of four chords throughout this song it's laden with it so we got that portion down and now we're going to continue on further in the song so before we talked about the succession of four chords Every time I hit you, know that Every time I hit you, know I ain't got no sense. Then this is followed up by this figure. Ain't no use in bringing no, ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. Ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. Cause this other can is mine, every bit of it. Southern can belongs to me. All right, and 
And to do this, this portion that sounds like this, what you're going to do is you're going to take the thumb and you're going to locate the third fret fifth string, and then you play this, and then either with the thumb or the index finger you're going to play the fourth string open. I like to do it with the, uh, the index finger. One, two. So you play the third, third fret, fifth string, then the fourth string open, then you go over to the second fret, fifth string, then you play the fourth string open right after that. Then you go over to the first fret, fifth string, and then play the fourth string open. Then you play the fifth string open twice. So all together it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But you're supposed to do it in the finger picking pattern to go fast. So it's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Ain't no use in bringing no, 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 is what that sounds like. And um, the portion where he sings stuff to me, he'll play this long A and A7 figure. Stuff to me, ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me, ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. Ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. Ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. Then he plays that, then he plays that A chord briefly here before he goes into D7, G, back to C. So again, it's Ain't no use in bringing no stuff to me. Cause you southern can is mine. And again, you're going back to those elements in the chorus, and then the the extension of the uh, the chorus where he doesn't want it to end per se. So that's the the other kind of unique characteristics that feature out of this song. So again, it's a very simple song, which I'm not going to spend too much time on, but it has all of these ragtime elements. You're playing these chords. And then you play these um, these four chord figures with the whole rest in between. All right, so that is uh, basically the 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 gist of the song. Very straightforward and easy. And see if you can play um, "Come to Come Around to My House, Mama," which is essentially sort of the same. Come on around. Nobody that but me. And tell me a hot shot, a lion, a cheetah. I'm going back to Genesee. The very similar concepts there. So this is like the the kind of the first ragtime feature out of this set. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know. But hopefully this lesson um, serves you nicely. So if you haven't already, definitely check out the ebook. Available on my website store, deltalumusic.com. I appreciate all of your interest and good luck to learning McTell songs. Have a good night.